My name's Avi Kalut, um, I'm 15 years old and I'm the founder of Girls Into Coding um, and our mission is to try and engage as many girls as possible to get involved with technology and coding based activities. So I first got um, into tech when I was around 7 years old. What inspired me to set up Girls Into Coding was that um, through running workshops myself for both boys and girls, I noticed that the majority of people attending were boys and on some occasions it was only boys. Statistics show that women make up only 35% of people studying STEM subjects. I'm here to meet Avi, who wants to change that. Avi! Hi! That looks incredible! Thank you! Do you want to show me around? Yeah, let's start with this table over here. Tell me a little bit more about some of the other things that the girls might be seeing and learning today. So we've got some 3D printing, robotics, all different kind of um, areas of technology and hopefully the girls will be able to pick up um, designing, making, coding, um, all hands-on skills. What kind of impact has girls into coding had? I've seen their confidence increase and what's also really great to see is the girls coming back again um, which is kind of builds up a sense of community. It feels great to see that like I'm not the only girl into coding and that there's a bunch of other people around who enjoy coding like me. It is the future and I think it's really important that girls get involved in this from a young age to be able to become the tech leaders of the future. And Dr. Imaphodon joins us now, along with 15-year-old Avi, who's with us here in the studio. Hello, Avi. It's lovely Hi. to meet you. You started coding when you were seven. Yes. Before we talk about that, can you just explain to old men like me what coding actually is? And we sort of covered it a bit there, but can you just explain it to me in really simple terms? So coding is essentially lines of code on your screen which you program to, um, to make something happen. What I do is I integrate coding with building something, so that's called physical computing. So what I do is I make robots and I use code to really bring it to life. Um, and to create all sorts of projects. I get so it. it's literally, coding is literally putting numbers in which talk to the computer and tell them to do it, yeah. basically. Sorry to bring it down to absolute ladybird guide too, but I think that's how people will understand it. So you're super clever, aren't you? <laughs> what did you make? Why did you... I love your little smile. Uh, um, why, did you, why did you decide that we needed more women doing this? What were the problems by having this dominated by men? Well, through going to different workshops, while well, physically attending them myself, I noticed that the majority of people attending were boys, and on some occasions it was only boys who were actually coming. And as a girl, I wanted there to be others like me who kind of had that interest and who were actually at those different workshops. So I wanted to set up Girls Into Coding to encourage other girls like me to get into this kind of um, space and to show that it's OK to be a girl and to be interested. Why, why do you think that was the case? I mean, you're changing it, which is... It's brilliant that you're making change, you know, you're affecting things. Fantastic. You're not just talking the talk, you're walking the walk. But why do you think it was as, as bad as that? Why weren't girls coming forward? I think they see technology um, and STEM as something perhaps not for them and I think kind of um, from the ages of um, 10 upwards they start to lose interest in um, technology and I feel it's really important to bring their interest back and to really show them that it's a great thing to get into. Um, you and can... how did you get and into it at seven? Got... You were seven Sorry. years old when, when, when you got into it. How did, how did that happen? So um, my mum always brought me to kind of like different events, um, technology based events and I would also um, participate in hands-on workshops so all these different events I was going to, my interest gradually built up and built up. And it has a big, uh, doesn't it, Dr Anne-Marie? So it has a big um, impact, doesn't it? There you are. Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we can't see you. There you are. Uh, it, has, um, it has a big impact on real world. I was interested to see that, you know, when Apple brought out a package of health package, it didn't include uh, monitoring the menstrual cycle because the coding was done by men. Really? So, yeah, God. yeah, it didn't. So that's, that's the sort of impact it'll have. It's not just because we want to see women involved in all areas because that's a great thing in terms of equality. It's also impact back on us, isn't it? Tell us a bit more about that side of it. Exactly, it, it definitely is. And I think it, it's one of those ones where it's, it's the small, it's in the perspectives, it's in the ways that they prioritise. You know, it's interesting that Apple, you know, didn't have that as a priority. You know, if there are a couple more women in the room, they might have realised that periods maybe were a thing and that is a part of a lot of people's health journeys. And so it has this impact because we're not part of that decision-making process. And technology is everywhere. It's making decisions about our lives, making decisions about the workplace, decision about 
play, about finance, you know, all these different places. And so if we're not part of that solution, then actually we end up being harmed more by the, by the technology than it solving problems. So what do you think about what RV has done then? Yeah. I love what Avi is doing. I mean, I run STEMETs. We run, you know, workshops across STEM as well, up and down the country. And I love what Avi is doing because it's coming from her. It's her wanting to solve a problem, but also she's able to get creative with it, which I think is what goes missing so much from a lot of these STEM discussions. We think about maths and science as, you know, you have to memorize formulas and you have to recall them. Whereas no, it's about solving problems, but also about being creative. And so it's fantastic, you know, what you've got to see there on the VT, you know, this were, these were young people creating their own virtual worlds, right? This is them, you know, playing with virtual reality and uh, create, and playing with robots. And we don't get to see that often enough. And actually, we want to focus on that creativity yep. more than the numbers and the coding and the, the beep boop uh, stuff in the background. It's about people being able to, to express yes. themselves, I think, using well, STEM. Well, let's, we've only got half a minute left. Let's finish with you, Abby. You're 15 now. 15. Um, what do you want to do? So um, in the future, I'm not too sure I want to do, but I definitely want to do something in the tech space, um, yeah. whether it's engaging even more girls on a kind of like international level or just kind of um, doing what I can to get more girls involved in tech and STEM-based activities. What degree will you study when you go to uni? Because you're obviously going to go to uni. What will you read? Um, not too sure, <laughs> but tech-related, definitely. It'll be, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Well, many, many congratulations. As I said, you've made a difference already. You're 15 and you've made a difference, and that's... Oh, your okay. parents are so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah, they really must. Lovely to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. If you could just show me how to turn the computer on before you leave, because actually, <laughs> while we've been chatting, it's frozen, so maybe that's your last duty of the morning. Yeah, and can you have a look at my iPhone? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Up, you know, I'll give it to you for the break. She just raises her eyes to heaven at yeah, the older yeah. generation. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Brilliant.